Welcome to Course 5, Neuromotor Function and Social Cognition. Over the next six weeks, we will work in depth with the final two constructs of the neurodevelopmental framework presented in this year-long course. Although the materials I will introduce focus on neuromotor function and social cognition in particular, throughout this course I will also encourage you to draw upon what you now know about the constructs previously introduced in courses 2, 3, and 4 as you complete assignments and engage in our live discussions and discussion forums. The goal of this is to think about the ways the full neurodevelopmental framework can support your own work and practice, including, but not limited to, neuromotor function and social cognition. This slide provides you with a broad overview of Course 5 to give everyone an idea of where we are headed. In addition to understanding the components of the constructs themselves, as in Course 3, we will think closely about how neuromotor function and social cognition operate in the classroom. In what ways might these constructs lead us to uncover hidden demands in learning tasks and assignments? What kinds of challenges might come up at school for students with weaknesses in these areas? And how can we support students in strengthening their weaknesses or strengths in neuromotor function and social cognition to support their learning and their participation in school? Throughout the course, we will also emphasize the connections across constructs to better specify challenges that arise for our students with weaknesses in one or more areas. For example, how might a neuromotor weakness constrain a student's ability to express himself through written language? How might a student's strength in social cognition obscure a weakness in memory or attention? These kinds of questions are complex, and so we will talk about them and think them through together. And finally, the activities and assignments for this course have been designed specifically to help you think through these connections as you deepen understanding of neuromotor function and social cognition. Assignments for Course 5 follow a similar format and structure to the assignments you completed in Course 3. Each week, you will have either a discussion forum or quick write assignment to complete based on the readings and mini lecture for that week. In addition, each week you will have one additional activity or assignment that will address the material presented and help you connect it to your own work. There will also be a four-part learning activity assignment due in weeks 2, 3, 5, and 6. The full description of this assignment is available under the Course Assignments Resources tab on the Moodle page and is also described in, uh, specific with specificity in the syllabus itself. Similar to the Course 3 Lesson Planning assignment, each part of this assignment is meant to build upon the last, with the overall goal being to use the neurodevelopmental constructs to address the learning needs in your practice. What's different is that this assignment asks you to focus on a target student rather than the whole class, and you will also be guided to use your knowledge of all of the constructs to support that target student. Of course, we will talk about all of these assignments as the course progresses, and we can adjust the aspects of the assignment for those of you that are not currently working directly with students to make sure that the assignment itself is as meaningful for you in your own practice as possible. And finally, we'll be consistent with the schedule of assignment due dates and collaborate sessions we've established already in this course. All assignments for the week will be due on Sunday nights, and the collaborate sessions will be held on Wednesdays from 6 to 7. If you're unable to attend a session, just as before, please view the recorded session afterwards and post a discussion forum response by Sunday of that week. For the first three weeks of this course, we'll focus on the construct of neuromotor function. The mini lecture slides for this week will introduce the features and components of neuromotor function, and the assignments will guide you to begin considering the role of neuromotor function in your work with students. In week two, we will consider the hidden challenges related to neuromotor function that are embedded in activities and common classroom assessments. And in week three, we will look at ways to address neuromotor function demands in the classroom by either bypassing weaknesses, developing skills, or building upon strengths. Week one learning objectives are as follows. 
understand components of neuromotor function, and understand neuromotor function demands at school. When you've finished watching this mini lecture, please then click on the link to the mini lecture slides for this week that present the content, the components of neuromotor function. Also be sure to watch Craig Pullman's video on neuromotor function prior to Wednesday if possible. I'll see you soon!